Welcome to Time Tunnel Radio. Mr. President, starring Edward Arnold. <laughs> the American Broadcasting Company and its official... Mr. President at home in the White House. The elected leader of our people, our fellow citizen and neighbor. These are little known stories of the men who've lived in the White House. Dramatic, exciting events in their lives that you and I so rarely hear. True human stories of Mr. President. Now, Edward Arnold. As Mr. President, let's visit him in the White House. It is Sunday, and the old mansion is resting quietly after a busy day. We walk through the great doors under the presidential seal, across the foyer, and down the long hall to the president's study. How do you do? Sit down, won't you? Have you ever faced two separate problems at the same time that wouldn't stay separate? I mean, they keep getting mixed up in your head and finally get mixed up together in reality. That was the odd situation faced by one of our presidents. Later on, of course, I'll tell you which president it really was. But meantime, maybe you'll be able to guess. It was a little after 12 o'clock the day my secretary, Miss Sarah, came into my study without my even hearing her. Mr. President? Mr. President? Hmm? Oh, yes, Miss Sorry. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. You were thinking about something? Yes, Gold and my brother-in-law. I beg your pardon? I was thinking about Gold and I was thinking about my brother-in-law, and both of them keep getting tangled up together. <laughs> Maybe there's a connection between them. Well, I almost wish there was. You know, I start out wondering what we can do to keep the price of gold steady and keep the country's business from crashing. And the next thing I know, I'm wondering how to warn my sister that her husband has, well, certain limitations. I think I know what you mean. Then I start wondering how to tell Jenny that, but... You came in to tell me something, Miss Sarah. Yes, your sister, Mrs. Carton, and Mr. Arthur Carton are in the dining room waiting for you. Oh, great Scott, I forgot they were coming. I'd better be getting in there. After you, Miss Sarah. Thank you. Uh, you're going to lunch with us, aren't you, Miss Sarah? Well, I've already had my luncheon, Mr. President, thank you. <laughs> you don't like Arthur Carton either, do you? Oh, I simply got hungry early, Mr. President. <laughs> I suppose it's only that he's my brother-in-law. No man likes his brother-in-law and vice versa. <laughs> well, here we are. I'll be at my desk, Mr. President. All right, and thank you. Oh, hello, Jenny. How are you? Oh, it's good to see you, Mr. President. You're very formal, Jenny. How are you, Arthur? Mr. President, it's always an honor to see you. I was saying to Jenny last evening before we left New York, not everybody can be the president's brother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Arthur, that's right. There's a limit to all things. Uh, Jenny, how do you like living in New York? Oh, Arthur and I are very happy. We have a lovely house. You must come and see it. Oh, it isn't a bad little place, Mr. President. I picked it up in the course of my real estate business. As brother-in-law of the United States, I felt that... Uh, uh, naturally, Arthur, naturally. Please sit down. Uh, I'm getting kind of hungry. I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. President. Oh, did you change your mind about luncheon, Miss Sarah? Secretary Booker has just come, sir. He'd appreciate seeing you for a moment. Oh, of course. Mr. Booker, will you go in, please? Thank you. I'm very sorry, Mr. President, but it's urgent. It's all right, George. You know my sister and her husband. Uh, you're looking very well, Mrs. Carton. Thank you, Mr. Booker. And you, Mr. Carton. Uh, thanks. Mr. President. Oh, you can speak uh, freely, George. It's quite all right. Uh, this morning's report on the price of gold, sir, from New York, it's getting high again, above 140. Mm-hmm. That is high. I'd like your approval for my next action, sir. I want to buy in one million dollars worth of government bonds, uh, using government gold, of course. Uh, if I may insert a word, Mr. President. Yes? Uh, of course, I understand it. By buying up outstanding government bonds, you're reducing the government debt. But when you pay out gold, you'll drive the price of gold downward. As a businessman, may I ask if that's wise? If the price of gold goes too high, it's bad for business. Yes, but uh, what of the men in the companies who need gold? Well, they can pay a fair price, not too high, not too low. Go ahead, George. If you approve the transaction, sir, I'll carry it out this afternoon. Uh, Mr. President, you'll hit the gold market a very hard blow. 
Or uh, maybe that's what you want. <laughs> no, Arthur, no. Our purpose is only to keep gold at a fair price. The only people who might suffer seriously from a drop in the price are speculators. And frankly, we don't care what happens to them. All right, George, go ahead as you plan today. Now, uh, how about joining us for luncheon? Uh, no, no, thank you, Mr. President. As I have your approval, I'd better get busy at once. Good day, Mrs. Carton. Mr. Carton. Mr. Booker. Nice to see you, Booker. Mr. President. Thank you for coming over, George. Arthur, I didn't realize you knew so much about gold and bonds and high finance. Well, uh, tell her, Mr. President. Tell her she has a cleverer husband than she thought. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur, I appreciate your interest in public affairs, but I think you can leave the decisions to me. Well, but, sir, Arthur's your I, uh... brother-in-law, Mr. President, and he knows what he's talking about. But, Jenny, I... Oh, let's forget the whole business and have luncheon, shall we? Uh, sit down a moment, Jenny. Before you start back to New York, we've got to have a quiet word. You want to criticize Arthur, I suppose. I only want to warn you about him. I know you love him, but you're, you've also got to understand him. I think I do. I'm not so sure, Jenny. I'm not so sure. The fact that he's married to you and you're the sister of the president seems to have gone to his head. I'm afraid he may talk about what he learns when he comes here. You can trust Arthur. Now, don't get angry, Jenny. I'm only saying this so that your marriage will be happier. So you criticize my husband? I only want to make certain he doesn't repeat anything heard here today. Or at any other time. I can't insult him that way. Why, why Arthur's the soul of discretion. <clears throat> If you loved me and wanted to see me happy, you wouldn't criticize Arthur. Jenny, I'm not... You'd do everything you could to make us happy. Your being president is a great honor for us. Why should we conceal it? Why should you make everybody think you're ashamed of me and of Arthur? All right, Jenny, all right. Forget what I said. I'm sorry if I hurt you. Now, come and see me again soon, won't you? Or perhaps I'll visit you in New York. Beg pardon, Mr. Trent. Well, what is it, Norman? Mr. Larkin is here, sir. Well, show him in, Norman. Show him in. Yes, sir. Mr. Larkin, come in, please. Come in? Of course I'll come in. <laughs> Hello there, Trent. How are you this afternoon, you old pirate? Now, sit down, Mr. Larkin. Norman, close the door behind you, please. Yes, Mr. Trent. Well, Mr. Larkin, we have to talk about this morning's drop in the price of gold. Yeah, it cost me nearly a million dollars, Trent. How much did it cost you? More than I care to admit, I'm sure I was just as surprised by the government's action as you were. I'd like to believe anything ever surprised you, Trent. But I don't propose to be surprised again. No? How? Arthur Carton is due here at any moment. A real estate fellow. What good's he to anybody? He's the brother-in-law of the president, isn't he? Oh, I see. I've had several talks with him, and uh, he's just been to Washington in the White House. Hey, what good is that? Is that an income pope or my brother-in-law? I wouldn't tell him a day of the week. I think you underestimate Arthur Carton. I think he can influence the president to do as we wish. Don't you see, if the government stops selling gold to keep the price low, we can buy a great deal more and drive the price up to suit ourselves. Uh, Trent, you can do all that yourself. Why invite me to come in with you? I'll need money. Even more than I can put my hands on. Oh, it'll be that big? The biggest thing that ever hit the country, Mr. Logan. Yes? Mr. Carton, by appointment, sir. Of course, Norman. Mr. Carton. Hello, Trent. Hello, Larkin. Hello there. Uh, help yourself to a cigar, Mr. Carton. Try my dollar, Brand Carton. Oh, thanks, thanks. But you didn't buy these on your gold profits this morning, did you, Larkin? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing funny about uh, that. Mr. Larkin, please. Uh, Mr. Carton, I trust you had a pleasant visit at the White House. Oh, more than pleasant, Trent. Very uh, informative. That's so? What would you like to know? I think I understand you, Mr. Carton. Uh, after all, we're all businessmen, eh? <laughs> How much do you want, Carton? Uh, Mr. Larkin, please. Uh, Mr. Carton, uh, no doubt you're interested in making money. Uh, naturally. I've got quite a position to keep up. I'm the president's brother-in-law. Yes, we know. Uh, my idea is this, Mr. Carton. Let me invest some money in the gold market for you. Well, that's very nice, only uh, <clears throat> I haven't got much money to invest. Uh, uh, several real estate... Oh, I'll take care of the whole thing. Any losses will be ours, is that right, Mr. Larkin? And uh, any profits, Mr. Carton? 
will be yours. Well, that's very, very nice, Mr. Trent. Uh, now, what happened yesterday was this. My wife and I were having lunch with the president. We're not paying for social gossip, Carton. We want to know what the president's got in mind. Well, uh, <clears throat> of course. But uh, what do you want me to do? Arrange a dinner with us and the president, where we can persuade him not to sell so much government gold. Uh, well, next weekend, the president's going to West Point for the graduation exercises. Mm -hmm. He'll be in New York that evening. I've got an idea, Trent. Let's invite him for dinner aboard one of my boats of the Boston Line. That would be very private, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'll manage to have the whole vessel to ourselves. Can you arrange it, Carton? Gentlemen, I promise you my brother-in-law will do anything I ask him. Anything. President, I'm sorry there's fog on Long Island Sound tonight, but I hope it won't spoil your dinner. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Larkin. Matter of fact, I'll take some more of that very excellent duck. You do keep a good appetite, Mr. President. Uh, Jenny, he's your brother. You could call him by his first name. Don't you agree, Trent? Uh, I think I agree with your wife, Mr. Carton. The appearance of things is often helped by what you call them. Uh, that sort of talk's not for me. I believe in calling a spade a spade and a dollar a dollar. Speaking of dollars, Mr. President, may I offer an opinion on your gold policy? Of course, Mr. Trent. And Trent's well worth listening to, Mr. President. What he doesn't know about money, nobody knows. And that's saying a lot. <laughs> uh, my motive in speaking, Mr. President, is to help the country. I feel quite humble about that. Mm-hmm. I see our farm population, our railroads, our ships, our merchants, all facing losses as a result of your administration policy of selling gold to keep the price down. That's one side of the situation, Mr. Trent. The other is that if gold is too high, the same groups face losses, too. Nobody wants gold too high, Mr. President. Just about somewhere in the middle. Uh, Mr. Larkin, did you ever try to swim, swim a very wide river? Oh, as a boy, I suppose so. Why? When you were in the water, could you tell exactly where the middle was? I'd like to see the price kept in the middle, too, if I knew exactly where it was. Experiment, Mr. President. We are experimenting. If you'll forgive me, sir, your experiments are all in the direction of a lower price for gold. Try experimenting in the other direction. Uh, Jenny, can you reach me the salt, please? Oh, of course. Pass it on, Arthur. Uh, here you are, Mr. President. Oh, thank you very much. This duck is truly wonderful. Um, a lot of sense in what Trent says, don't you think, Mr. President? I'm sure there is, or he wouldn't say it. Well, Mr. President, I don't see why the price of gold can't go up indefinitely. A moment ago, Mr. Larkin, you said you wanted to see it in the middle. <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Larkin meant uh, the middle might be always higher. It might or it might not. Ah, that's wonderful duck, Mr. Martin. Yes, I'll tell the chef. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to take Trent's thinking one step further. Oh, would you, Arthur? A uh, liberty I may take as your brother-in-law. Well, what is it? I think Trent feels it's not the job of government to interfere with the natural course of business. Gentlemen, I assure you that this administration will never interfere with the natural course of business. Really, Mr. President? If you can tell me whose business you mean. Oh. Mr. President, if you're ready, let me call for dessert now. With pleasure, Mr. Larkin. Are you ready, Jenny? Every bit. Uh, Mr. President, Martin, we... we've talked enough business here tonight. Here's a beautiful lady at the table. Let's think about entertaining her, shall we? <laughs> oh, Mr. Larkin, you're a very intelligent man. <laughs> I cut off the conversation. The president wasn't committing himself one way or the other. Trent, you noticed that. Yes. Just the same, Larkin, you made a mistake. I know my brother-in-law. That's just his way. But I tell you, he was coming around. All right, Bill, leave it if you like, you two. Leaving us, Larkin? I'm leaving this office. I'm leaving our agreement. Count me out, Trent. Out? But, Larkin, Count you... me out, I said. Good day, gentlemen. Well, I, uh, uh, I hope you're not going to quit, Trent. It looks hopeless, doesn't it, Mr. Carton? Why, well, no, no, no. What I said to Larkin just now is true. I know my brother-in-law. Knowing him is one thing. Influencing him is another. You stand to make millions if I can get the president to stop selling gold. I stand to make whatever you've invested for me. At the moment, it's increased to about $75,000. 75000 Trent, I'm not going to give up. Are you with me? What do you suggest? The president's going to be in New York again soon. I'll have my wife invite him to my house for dinner. And? And you, too. 
Without Larkin and his crude ways to spoil things, maybe we can make some headway. The future of the country, Mr. President, believe me. That's the only thought that moves me to appeal to you again. It's a noble thought, Mr. Trent. Excuse me, gentlemen. If you finish dinner, shall we go back to the sitting room? Oh, by all means, Jenny. Though after all that dinner, I feel more like standing than sitting. <laughs> How about you, Trent? Well, oh, frankly, Mr. Carson, I make it a rule never to open Oh, Jenny. Yes? Uh, let them go ahead. I want to talk to you a moment. I'll close the door. I do hope you enjoyed the dinner been so nice to have you here, Mr. President. Uh, Jenny, you're getting as bad as, uh, as Arthur. Certainly you and I can forget I'm president. I'm sorry. I always make you angry so easily. It isn't that, Jenny. But I must ask you to have a serious talk with Arthur. He's in deeper than he realizes. Deeper? In what? With Trent and Larkin. Arthur oughtn't be to associate with him. But you? What about you? I have reasons, Jenny. I've got to find out what they're up to. Oh, you never did like Arthur. You were against our marriage. Oh, no, Jenny, please don't say that. It's what you mean, and you haven't changed. And here's Arthur working so hard to help you, to get these brilliant men to Jenny, advise you. Jenny, for heaven's sake, these men they trap me for some purpose of their own. That's plain as day. Arthur may not realize it, and you ought to warn him that I understand exactly what's going on. They're only using him. You talk as if Arthur were a complete fool. Sometimes I think he is. Sometimes I think he's worse than that. What? This gold scheme of Trent's is far too clever and complex. Arthur may get into serious trouble. If you love him, you'll tell him that. I'll do no such... Such you do anyway. Trent's waiting. Arthur, I'm very tired. Tell Mr. Trent I enjoyed our discussion, will you please? Good night, Jenny. <laughs> Mr. Booker is... Oh, hello, George. How are you today? It isn't my health that's in question, sir. The health of gold, huh? I want your approval to sell another two millions in gold. Has the price gone up again? My reports from New York say that Frank Trent's still buying, keeping the price above 140, trying to get it up to 150. Uh, George, maybe we've been making a mistake selling gold as we have been. Do you want to change your policy? Maybe. I don't quite understand, sir. I've got a plan, George. I'm going to Pennsylvania for a rest. Of course, you'll be under pressure not to sell from one side and contrary pressure from other sides. Simply keep your own counsel and come and see me in the country in a few days. We'll talk it over then. Mr. Larkin, I don't see how you can let this opportunity slip. What opportunity? The president's gone to the country for a week. What of it? Tell him, Mr. Carton. It's a little summer resort, Larkin, miles from the railroad and telegraph lines. News will be a little slower reaching him. Besides, Trent persuaded him over to our side. Did you, Trent? I didn't think so at the time, but for several days now, there's been no sale of government gold. So it looks as if I did succeed. You see, Larkin? Now come in with us. Hey, Trent. Yes? If it's true the government isn't going to sell, we put millions into buying gold, we could corner the market, couldn't we? Exactly. Then everybody in the country who needs gold would have to come to us, and we could put the price up as high as we like. Take on that, Trent. We're partners again. Go on down to the gold room now and get started. <laughs> I'll pay 147. I'll take any part of three millions at 147. Hello, Trent. Going well, isn't it? Beautifully, Mr. Garden. Beautifully. But you look worried. What's the matter? Yeah, There's only one thing. Our buying is creating a terrible stir in the financial district and in the newspapers. It may frighten the president. What can we do about it, Trent? I have one idea. You must write a letter to your brother in law, Mr. Carton. A letter urging him to disregard all this furor. Tell him there is no cause for alarm. A letter? Where he is, it won't reach him for three days. Oh, yes, it will. Norman! Norman! Coming, Mr. Trent. Yes, Mr. Trent? Norman, I want you to take Mr. Carton over to my office. He will write a letter to the president, which I want you to deliver. Yes, sir. Oh, and Norman, as soon as it's delivered, send me a telegram to that effect.
Mr. Booker. Oh, uh, what say, Miss Sarah? <laughs> you're shot. I'm afraid you're not paying attention. I keep wondering what the president's goal plan is. Yes, so do I. Well, George, it's your shot. Uh, oh, yes, sir. And now you, Miss Sarah. Oh, watch this one. <laughs> Too hard, Miss Sarah. You don't know your own strength, do you? It's your shot, George. Uh, yes, sir. I wonder if the newspapers have arrived. Well, we have yesterday's. I'm sorry you didn't bring them in when you came this morning. I'd like to know more about Trent's and Larkin's gold buying. Oh, give them rope, George. Give them rope. Mr. President, that man over there, you seem to have a visitor. Hmm? Who is he? What, does he belong to the hotel? Mr. President. Oh. May I speak to you, sir? What is it? I'm sorry to interrupt your croquet match, sir. I've been sent from New York to deliver this letter to you. Oh, thank you. It's from Mr. Arthur Carton, sir. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Dear Mr. Perhaps you've noticed reports. Please don't take them seriously. No cause for alarm. All right, young man. There's no answer. Then I'll be going right back, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry to have interrupted, sir. Oh, George... This letter from my beloved brother-in-law urges me not to be alarmed by reports of the rising market in gold. But even yesterday, the price was going over 150. George, when Arthur Carden says don't, that's exactly the moment to do. I've got to write him a letter. Miss Sarah. Yes, Mr. President. We're leaving for Washington at once. <laughs> Yep. I want to send a telegram, please. Yep. Here it is, all written out. Uh, letter delivered all right. Uh, that right? That's right. Uh. Letter delivered all right. Mr. Larkin, Mr. Carton, look. A telegram from my man, Norman. All uh, right, let me see. Uh, letter delivered all right. What does that tell us? <laughs> no, no, you've read it wrong, Mr. Larkin. Look. Letter delivered. Period. All right. Don't you see what it means? That's my brother-in-law's way of saying, go ahead. What? He's right, Mr. Larkin. I'm sure of it. Go ahead. Mr. President, we've got to act. We've got to break that high price. They've driven it over 155. George, that's exactly what I've been waiting for. Now's the time to sell. Good, sir. Up to three million? Three million. Start with five million, George. <laughs> Mr. Trent, I'm back. Oh, hello, Norman. You received my telegram, sir? Letter delivered all right? Yes, of course, Norman. Larkin's in there now. Bye. Will you repeat your message, please? Letter delivered all right. Norman, didn't it say, letter delivered, period, all right? Meaning that the president said he understood the letter? But the president didn't say anything like that, Mr. Trent. <gasps> Had the telegram just said the letter was safely delivered. Oh. It, it must have got mixed up in transit. Norman, we've made a terrible mistake. Not a word about this to anyone. No, sir. Trent, Trent, I've got to talk to you. Yes, Mr. Carton. I've just had a letter from the president. He's against what you and Larkin are doing, mm. and he asked me what I stand to gain or lose. You might tell him, Mr. Carton. Well, I, I, I can't. I, I've got to be able to tell him I have no stake in this, or well, he'll never speak to me again. And he's my brother-in-law. Trent, give me my money and let me out, will you? It's about $100,000, Mr. Carton. I'll have a check drawn for you at once. Oh, thanks very much. Goodbye, Trent. I'll, I'll come and see you next week. Norman. Yes, Mr. Trent? Go out there on the floor and find my brokers. Tell them to stop buying gold. And to sell? Yes, sir. And Norman, not a word to Mr. Larkin. Let him go on buying. But he's your partner. You'd have to cover his losses. That's true, Norman. On second thought, tell my brokers to sell, but not to sell to Mr. Larkin. Hurry, Norman. The market will break at any moment. <laughs> Part of five million to one sixty. No, no, I won't sell. I'm buying up to five million at one sixty. Five million at one sixty. Come on, come on. Five million at one sixty. Come on. 
Uh, the market is broken. By order of the president, the government is selling gold again. What? Five millions. Larkin, you can't corner the market. You're lit. <laughs> President, Mr. President. Hmm. Oh, oh, Miss Sarah, I'm I'm sorry. Thinking. I'm trying to, and about the same two things, gold and my brother-in-law, <laughs> and they still get mixed up together. Um, look who's in the doorway, Mr. President. Hmm. Oh, Jenny. <laughs> oh, come in, Jenny. Come in. Mr. President, I, I was afraid to tell you I was coming. I, I was afraid you'd be too angry to see me, so I. I just came. Why, of course, Jenny. You're my sister, aren't you? A stupid one, I'm afraid. Excuse me, Mr. President. I'll be at my desk. I wish you wouldn't go, Miss Sarah. I know you didn't like my husband either. Mrs. Carr. What is it, Jenny? He was so right about Arthur. He was entangled with those men, and I, I was so very wrong about it. Well, well let I... me finish. I must have made you so angry. If it hadn't been for Arthur and... My stupid insistence, you wouldn't have ever have seen them. This whole gold panic wouldn't have happened. Uh, Jenny, let me tell you something. I'm glad it happened this way. What? Yes, Arthur was foolish, of course, but his fellows were up to. Once I knew the truth, I was able to lead them on to the point where I could smash their scheme once and for all. So, you see, Arthur actually did me a service. <sighs> I'd like to believe that, Mr. President. <laughs> Miss Sarah. Yes, Mr. President. <laughs> My sister won't believe me. Tell her how many times I told you I welcomed the situation. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, it's quite true, Mrs. Carton. The president said to me many times, he said... You see, yes, Jenny, sir. now let's try and forget the whole thing, hmm? We'll begin by your staying for luncheon, will you? Uh, yes. If you'll let me borrow a room upstairs to change in. Why, of course, go ahead. And your bags will be set up to you. I'll try not to be long. No. Miss Sarah, you're a very loyal secretary. <laughs> thank you, Mr. President. No, no, no. Miss Sarah, thank you. <laughs> well, have you guessed which president it was who fought the gold speculators and had a bad case of too much brother-in-law? The time was 1869, and Ulysses S. Grant lived in the White House then as Mr. President. The financier who fought uh, were, of course, the Sly J. Gould and the rambunctious Jim Fisk. Come and see me again next week, won't you? I'll have another story for you about the White House and Mr. President I'm sure you'll enjoy. And thank you for dropping in. Goodbye. <laughs> Edward Arnold appears as Mr. President by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. Producers of Sinclair Lewis' Cast Timberlane, starring Spencer Tracy, Lana Turner, and Zachary Scott. <laughs> Mr. President is presented each week by the American Broadcasting Company. It is produced by Robert G. Jennings and directed by Dwight Hauser. Miss Sarah was played by Betty Lou Gerson. Our story by Paul R. Milton was suggested by incidents in the administration of President Ulysses S. Grant. Music was composed and conducted by Basil Adlam. Same time, same station, when Edward Arnold brings you another story of the White House and Mr. President. Now a special program note. A Sunday night radio fan, then tune in ABC for Luella Parsons. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.